here apologizing after police videos were kept secret. Tonight, many saying it is not enough. They want him out. Donald Trump doubling down on his ban on Muslims and now tweeting about Time magazine after learning he is not their person of the year. The gas cloud hanging over an American community already sending hundreds from their homes. Some families saying they're falling ill. And up in flames tonight, the burst of fire inside an American mall involving one of the most popular items on gift lists this year. Tonight, a new warning. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening. It's great to have you with us here on a Wednesday night, and we begin tonight with chilling new details about that young couple who turned into killers. From the very start, authorities have wanted to know where there are other attacks in the works. And now tonight, they have discovered photos on Syed Farouk's cell phone of a high school he visited more than once. They want to know if it was a possible target, and the central question all along, what brought these two together? Now authorities telling us both were committed to terrorism before they even met. And you're about to hear what they discussed online before she was issued that visa to come to America. ABC's chief investigative correspondent Brian Ross and his team on the trail again tonight. Authorities tonight say they are investigating whether this high school in San Bernardino County and its 2,400 students were to be the next target of the terror couple. Photos of the complex have now been discovered on Syed Farouk's cell phone. And according to these forms, it is a place he came to at least twice last year as a health inspector. We're working very, very hard to understand, did they have other plans, either for that day or earlier? Tonight, the FBI says even before Farouk brought Pakistani-born Tashfeen Malik back to the United States in the summer of 2014, even before they started dating, they were already committed terrorists. And online, as early as the end of 2013, they were talking to each other about jihad and martyrdom before they became engaged and then married and lived together in the United States. Which also means that whatever U.S. background checks were done for Malik's so-called fiancé visa, they failed to discover that someone espousing jihadist violence was being allowed into the country. The United States government does not normally ask the intelligence community to look at the emails of somebody just because they've applied for a visa. There's just too many of them. An examination of Malik's photos shows her evolution as she went from wearing a loose scarf and makeup at the start of college to a more and more conservative dress. Malik's Facebook account has been taken down, but ABC News was able to recover posts from the profile page of an account authorities believe was hers, showing a picture of a goat and a screen name in the Urdu language meaning a girl with no name. In August 2014, she wrote, Woe to coconut Muslims, a derisive term for one considered brown on the outside, white on the inside. The FBI director said today his agents are investigating whether terrorist matchmakers are using fiancé visas to get their people into the U.S. Do you agree with me that if it was arranged by a terrorist operative of organization, that is a game changer? It would be a very, very important thing to know. Brian Ross with us again here tonight. And Brian, you've been reporting on the friend here and the FBI authorities questioning him. And now we've learned of a possible a target, another attack that had been planned some time back that they didn't go through with? Uh, that's exactly right, David. The FBI has been interviewing Farouk's friend who provided him the assault rifles, Enrique Marquez. According to members of Congress who've been briefed by the FBI, Marquez claims he and Farouk had planned an attack in 2012 but got cold feet when the FBI busted up another terror plot in a nearby city. Tonight, the FBI, David, is trying to verify those claims and Marquez's mental stability. But as far back as 2012. That's right. Brian Ross tonight, thank you. This evening, our justice team uncovering something else as well, that this young couple from California and much of their communication on cell phones and computers was encrypted. Authorities say they were using apps technology that helped to hide any conversations burying their trail. Just how hard does it become to track them? ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas digging, and you're about to hear what he learned late today. ABC News has learned that the killer couple in the San Bernardino massacre had devices with encryption on them, slowing the retrieval of potential information about the plot. Sources say authorities are working around the clock to decode the encryption. Today, the FBI offered chilling new details about how the Garland, Texas shootout with ISIS sympathizers last May shows how encryption can cripple terror investigations. The FBI director said one of the ISIS sympathizers who died in a hail of gunfire with police 
outside that cartoon conference about the Prophet Muhammad exchanged 109 messages with an overseas terrorist the morning before leaving for the attack. But the messages are encrypted, and the FBI, six months later, still cannot unravel what was said. And Pierre Thomas with us now live from our Washington bureau tonight. Pierre, you have reported for some time now that authorities were worried about this very type of technology that hides communications, and your source is telling you that this couple, another example of that? Yes, one official telling me tonight this type of encryption is a huge problem and that it may keep the FBI from knowing whether these homeland attacks are simply inspired by ISIS or directed and controlled by the group. David? Pierre Thomas with us tonight. Pierre, thank you. We turn now to the firestorm involving Donald Trump and word coming in this evening from one of the most revered American athletes of all time, a Muslim American himself, Muhammad Ali. Late today in a statement, Ali saying, quote, speaking as someone who has never been accused of political correctness, I believe that our political leaders should use their position to bring understanding about the religion of Islam and clarify that these misguided murderers have perverted people's views on what Islam really is. ABC's Tom Yamas tonight with what Trump said just today when asked, is a ban on Muslims unconstitutional? Tonight, facing criticism here and abroad, Donald Trump now insisting his ban on Muslims coming to the U.S. somehow has nothing to do with religion. Wouldn't so a ban this on is Muslims, nothing... though, well, wouldn't that violate the Constitution's, you know, no, freedom of religion? No, because we don't have a Constitution. These are people that aren't in the country. These are people that are outside of the country. So we're really not talking about the Constitution. And it's not about religion. This is about safety. This has nothing to do with religion. It's about safety. But today, President Obama taking a veiled shot at Trump at an event commemorating the 150th anniversary of the 13th Amendment banning slavery. We betray the efforts of the past if we fail to push back against bigotry in all its forms. Hillary Clinton telling supporters in Iowa Trump traffics in prejudice and paranoia and that other GOP candidates are one and the same. Their language may be more veiled, less you know, dramatic, but their ideas aren't so different. Today, Trump, who loves to win, lost the title of Time's Person of the Year to German Chancellor Angela Merkel. But Time did release this. How's my hair? Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Behind the scenes footage from their previous Trump cover shoot. This bird is seriously dangerous, but beautiful. Trump sharing the camera with an ornery bald eagle who at one point tries to bite the billionaire's finger. His aspirin. And Tom Yamas with us now live tonight. And Tom, Donald Trump reacting today when he learned he wasn't named Time's Person of the Year? That's right, David. Angela Merkel was selected because of her decision to accept Syrian refugees into Germany. Trump tweeting today, I told you Time magazine would never pick me as person of the year. Despite being the big favorite, they picked the person who is ruining Germany. David? Tom Yamas covering this campaign every step of the way. Tom, thank you. We're going to turn now to the anger in the city of Chicago brewing at this hour, reaching a boiling point tonight. There was an apology today from that city's mayor after it was learned a series of police videos were kept secret, now made public. And tonight, the pictures coming in at this hour of the protesters in the streets there, many of whom are now saying this apology is not enough and that the mayor should resign. One video in particular that captured the shooting death of Loquan McDonald, 16 rounds in 15 seconds, kept from the public for 13 months. Mayor Manuel acknowledging it happened on my watch. ABC's Alex Perez on the scene of the protest tonight. Tonight, hundreds of angry protesters are taking to the streets of Chicago. Shutting down intersections along Chicago's famed Michigan Avenue, the Magnificent Mile. And while the protests have been, for the most part, peaceful, they have been very vocal about the one thing they want, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, to resign. Who gotta go? Who gotta go? The embattled mayor under scrutiny for weeks since the release of this video showing police is shooting Laquan McDonald, who later died. Video city attorneys fought to keep under wraps. I own it. I take responsibility for what happened because it happened on my watch. And I'm sorry. But just outside, critics not buying the apology. The, the political theater surrounded around today is so disingenuous. The normally combative mayor sounding emotional and humble, telling city council about a question a young man who has had run-ins with the law asked him. Do you think the police would ever treat you 
the way they treat me? And the answer is no. And that is wrong. And that has to change in this city. And David, this large crowd of demonstrators finally dissipating late this evening with already other protests scheduled for this week. The mayor says his newly created task force will come up with concrete solutions for the police department come March. David? Alex Perez in Chicago again tonight. Alex, thank you. And to a developing headline this evening out of Colorado now. The accused gunman in that deadly rampage at a Planned Parenthood in Colorado Springs last month appearing in court. 16 dramatic outbursts today telling the room he is guilty declaring himself a, quote, warrior for the babies. ABC's Clayton Sandell is in Colorado on the case again tonight. Tonight, the man accused of opening fire at a Colorado Springs Planned Parenthood office, killing three people, wounding nine in a five-hour gun battle, was in court, restrained by handcuffs and leg shackles. Protect babies. But defiant, in more than a dozen outbursts, Robert Deere says he is guilty, claiming to be a warrior fighting for the unborn. Kill the babies. That's what Planned Parenthood does. Deere is facing 179 felony counts, including first-degree murder in the deaths of a police officer and two others. His public defender is the same attorney who represented Aurora Theater shooter James Holmes at his insanity trial. Do you know who this lawyer is? He's the lawyer for the Batman shooter that drugged them all up. And that's what they want to do to me. That attorney suggesting today that Deere may not be mentally competent for a trial. And you're trying to silence the truth. You're trying to make me go, you want to make me. I think the problem is obvious, Judge. Deere has not yet entered a plea, and prosecutors have not yet decided if they will seek the death penalty. Clayton Sandell, ABC News, Denver. Clayton, thank you. We're going to turn now to the extreme weather, powerful storms, moisture clobbering the Pacific Northwest tonight. Dramatic new images this evening, drenching rains, a dangerous commute home in Tacoma, Washington, and a massive mudslide on U.S. 12 in Washington State, and ABC's Neil Karlinski is in Washington. Tonight, meteorologists are calling it a fire hose coming in off the Pacific. Okay, come on, Lord, help me get through this. From Seattle to Portland, three days of storms haven't just brought widespread flooding, but mudslides. Near Portland, a 60-year-old woman was killed when a tree fell on her bedroom. A series of mudslides temporarily blocked roads. One barreled through this waterfront home outside Seattle, tearing through the first floor, the garage, and cars, all of it while Tyler Ford's grandmother was still inside. Devastating to see everything uh, get turned upside down in an instant, but very thankful at the same time that everybody is alive. In some places, people have been rescued by boat. Next thing you know, it's time to get out. The waters have now begun to recede. Not before Portland smashed rain records two days straight. And Seattle broke a record yesterday with 2.13 inches of rain. The power of these landslides is just incredible. Not just the house that's been taken out, but there's actually a pickup truck in there and a car that's been swept down into the water over there. And it's these unstable hillsides that they'll be worried about because they're so saturated over the coming days out here, David. All right, Neil Karlinski with us tonight. Neil, thank you. Let's get right to meteorologist Rob Marciano. You can see it, just the scope of the system here. Yeah, this next one is a, is a really big one and a strong one. There's a classic comma-shaped cloud pattern indicative of a mature cyclone. This one's really going to blast a larger area. We've got warnings now out from California all the way to Colorado. Let's time things out. The fronts arrive from Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, 6 a.m. tomorrow. And then the rain, the wind, the snow moves through further inland for the next 12 to 24 hours. Another eight plus inches in some spots, more river flooding and mudslides. This energy gets into the plains with all that warm areas, David, for a severe weather threat this weekend. All right, meteorologist Rob Marciano. Rob, thank you. We move now to Southern California and to the dangerous gas cloud hanging over a community there. Many families saying it's already making them sick. The infrared image showing the gas there in purple. The leak discovered six weeks ago now. They say it still hasn't stopped. In fact, hundreds of families have now been relocated, and ABC's Kana Whitworth now on the lawsuit tonight. What looks like clear skies in the Southern California community is actually a town under a giant cloud of gas. We've got to close the windows. This infrared video appears to show methane gas leaking from an underground oil field owned by the Southern California Gas Company. The fact is they should have evacuated these people a long time ago. Lawyers representing residents in the community say they've been complaining of headaches, nosebleeds, and vomiting. The company.